By the power of Dreamcast. Yes, we're actually going to do a Dreamcast Dravaganza today, and we're going to start out with Ikaruga, that fantastic treasure made shmup by the same company that made fantastic gems such as Gradius V, Radiant Silver Gun, Alien Soldier, Gunstar Heroes, Guardian Heroes. They even had a few team members work on Contra 3 Alien Wars. Then we had Dynamite Heady, of course, uh, Mischief Makers. And even a McDonald's uh, game. I mean, even a McDonald's game is worth playing. I mean, each and every treasure game that I've ever played is a veritable gem, without a doubt. And now, uh, we're going to play uh, Ikaruga like we've never played it before on the mini. And I'm also going to play it on hard mode activate and see how far I can make it. Hard mode activate. Hopefully the cat won't bump the controller here and mess me up. This has an amazing gimmick where you can switch between light and dark at the touch of a button. And if you're light, any light projectiles won't hurt you. And if you're dark, any dark fire won't hurt you. You'll see right now. Light fire doesn't hurt me. Dark fire doesn't hurt me. Really, really cool gimmick. And you can use this as strategy to traverse these crazy levels. They get even more ridiculously absurd as you get farther into the game. And it even has a two-player mode activated, as you can see in the top right. But let's see if I can make it to the stage, and this music is tremendously awesome. Okay, the action is about to start. Don't mess me up, cat. I already lost one life there. Can't bump the controller. Bullet hell in his finest. Look at this insanity here! Very, very cool. I love that the graphics are greatly cleaned up here. And kapow! Can't pump the controller again! Wow! I'll continue! Need a little practice here. Okay! Boss battle activate! I do love each and every Cinder Punishment that I played. The Nintendo 64 one's great, and I love the one that was on the Wii. Fantastic game as well. More bullet hell! This is absurd. There will be no cat bumping of the keyboard today. Wow. I don't even know where to start, where to begin here. <laughs> Insanity.
definitely very fun. Come on! <laughs> there you go. And we're gonna move on to some more Dreamcast Drive again after we start out this next stage here. Okay, what else do we have to play today? Let's check it out. But running much better than before. I mean, still it's a little bit sluggish, but the greatly enhanced graphics, they're fixed now so much better than ever before. So I'm actually heading back to the main user interface and we're gonna load another game. And just like PSP, sometimes the memory will be a little bit uh, uh, bogged up and you have to wait about 3 to 10 seconds. Uh, we're going to try out uh, how about another shmup game, Res. Yet another game that I found in Bargain Mids back then. And it was uh, again on PlayStation 2 and Dreamcast. And of course, uh, they re-released it on Xbox 360 as a downloadable title. And then, of course, on PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4 one is actually a virtual reality one, but uh, this is a great uh, Panzer Dragoon style music rhythm shmup uh, stravaganza type thing going on here. And as far as this clock is concerned, it's very low priority, but you have a good chance of it being gone if you have Wi Fi installed and you set it to a perimeter that is pretty concurrent to your current time. But we're going to check out Res right now. Yet another fantastic game. Always been a big fan of this one. Okay. Let's check it out. Again, running way better than in previous releases. Nearly full speed here with minimal slowdowns and uh, uh, freezes whatsoever. And this game gets incredibly cool as uh, it's a whole cacophony. A musical progression when you get later on into the game. I'll try to get to a point where the music is a little, uh, a little bit more in insane. You can hear the music picking up and it just gets cooler and cooler as you uh, traverse the game. I love any type of uh, game that has a Panzer Dragoon style targeted system. Elemental Gearbo is a really cool one on PlayStation 1. And of course I love each and every Panzer Dragoon game. Uh, Panzer Dragoon Orda on Xbox is actually probably my favorite in the series. That is without a doubt my favorite one that I've played. And of course Panzer Dragoon on uh, 1 and 2 are really cool. We definitely need to get a little bit more of a faster Sega Saturn going on here. But unfortunately, Dynamic Recompiler has a conflict where it is not properly running. But a great guy in libretto, Naysayer, is actually working on it. And hopefully we'll be able to get it going. I want to be able to play Shinobi Legions, Panzer Dragoon, and a whole multitude of other fantastic Saturn games. And there are roughly uh, five courts that do not run too fast. We have BSNES, uh, PCFX, 3DO, Atari Jaguar, and of course Sega Saturn. They just simply do not run too well because of the dynamic recompiler intricacies. You can see this music is certainly picking up here. A beautiful game. And uh, PlayStation 4 1 is tremendously awesome in virtual reality. Look at this insanity. Wow. And uh, Afterburner Climax is a, a game that also has a really cool targeting system similar to Panzer Dragon.
But we're two for two here with two games running quite nicely and far better than in previous releases. And I have a few more games to showcase today. This could so easily be reskinned as a Tron game. I mean, come on now. If it was Tron, this would be fantastic. But it's hard to believe this was sitting in the bargain bin right next to Big Mother Truckers. I mean, that game is atrocious and absolutely horrendous and a, a really, really poor uh, copycat of of 18 Wheeler. We got a few more games to do today. I'm going to move on to some more games here, and uh, even like a, a Tron, Blade Runner, or even Star Fox style of uh, shmup like this would be incredibly cool. Of course, it is only natural that we do Sonic Adventure 1 as our next game. How many of you remember the great actor Jaleel White, who was known as the role of Urkel in the show Family Matters? I mean, he was a great actor before and after Family Matters, but did you also know he did the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog in the cartoon series? Unfortunately, he was typecast indefinitely as Urkel for the most part, so to speak, like many other actors that preceded him and followed him. And this is very, very sad that many actors have such great acting ability and chops, yet they get typecast into these roles. I mean, it is a sad fact. Just look at Ed O'Neill, who played uh, Al Bundy for many, many years. He actually had a great dramatic role in the movie A Few Good Men, but test audiences broke out laughing when they saw his role, so they cut that scene from the movie completely. I mean, he's a great actor. I love them in the movie Dutch, which followed up after Married with Children. And then we have other actors such as Tom Hanks and even Ron Williams, which were kind of stuck in their comedic roots for a number of years. But they started out with uh, shows such as Booze and Buddies and Mork and Minnie, respectively. But they moved on to greater dramatic turns such as, uh, should we say, Good Will Hunting and Catch Me If You Can. Selected. And I can easily see Jaleel White in a different alternate reality universe, multiverse, basically going head-to-head -head with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme in the Universal Soldier movie in lieu of Michael J. White, no relation, or even buffing up and playing Black Panther and or even Blade. Let's get him. And of course, uh, one of the best examples of stereotyping ever would obviously be Christopher Reeve, who played Superman and was never able to escape that role, ever. And luckily, Ben Affleck was able to escape the role of Daredevil because the movie flopped miserably. This music sounds like it's right out of the show Family Matters. And I'm going to be talking about Family Matters and some other shows I used to watch at the time, such as Perfect Strangers and, of course, uh, Step by Step. And I have no shame in admitting that I used to love these shows when I was younger. And I still like watching them nowadays. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yes, we need our Kool-Aid Man to activate here. Kool-Aid Man definitely needs his God of War and Devil May Cry proportionate game because we all know God of War moved on to being more like Last of Us. We need a God of War style game hack and slash with Kool-Aid Man. Oh yeah! But uh, let's get past this uh, boss encounter because I remember this crashing in my initial test uh, a couple months ago. And I also remember this being a pretty hysterically funny, unrealistic boss encounter. Here we have an ectoplasmic style enemy right out of a Ghostbusters cartoon, game, or movie. But watch what happens, guys and gals. Can you guess? Lo and behold, watch what happens. Yes, bullets have zero impact and no effect whatsoever on the boss encounter, but I can come in willy-nilly just like the Flash from the DC Universe and bop my butt on top of the enemy accordingly and take him out with no consequences whatsoever other than losing a few coins. Oh yeah, Kool-Aid Man again. Hopefully the cat doesn't bump the keyboard or the controller and I'll be able to get through this boss encounter. Let's check it out. Need a few coins there. I don't want to be taken out. Can't bump the keyboard style here. 
Two more hits, I need a coin though. <laughs> I need a coin before he takes me out. <laughs> One more hit. Looks like I missed that hit. I think he might always jump up in here before you get that third hit up. But I need another coin. And of course the camera angles are making it impossible to see the coins right now. There we go. There we go. Hey, I'll play with Boss encounter over, action stage activate. Now, I remember when I played this game uh, on demonstration at Best Buy, I'm pretty sure I was able to do the action sequence from the get-go in the demo. Because you know these town hubs get a little bit tedious at times, especially in Sonic Unleashed, where if you do one step, one misstep, you have to do the entire town sequence over Come again. On, that is so grievous going? and terrible. Tragic, in fact. And I remember some goofy soap opera, like lesser soap opera uh, style dialogue going on here from my last test example. So let's get this show on the road here and get past this part so we can get into the action sequence. You know nothing, fool. It's Chaos, the god of destruction. <laughs> of course, other actors also got typecast over the years. I mean... Macaulay Culkin stuck as the role of, of Kevin McAllister in the in the movies uh, Home Alone, but of course his uh, father and mother wanted him to do roles that were separate from this, such as Nutcracker in The Good Son, and uh, they weren't to a degree, but unfortunately he fell prey to drugs over the years, and uh, that kind of hurt his career. But much, much later on, he was able to finally recover from drugs, and he's doing much, much better now, and I can definitely see him coming back somehow, some way, shape, or form. Tails. Now, what am I gonna do with you? And again, Sonic Unleashed was such a terrible, terrible game. I mean, I still have it. If I'm gonna demonstrate that game again, I'd most certainly do it in a horse trap against the game because it is infinitesimally the amount of the goodness of any other Sonic the Hedgehog game ever made. It is by far one of the worst. So, action stage activate Emerald Coast. So far, so good. We made it past the crash bypass point. And ironically, uh, the show Family Matters was actually a spinoff of an earlier show called Perfect Strangers, which had Balky from Albania visiting his cousin, Larry Stapleton. That show lasted a good seven to eight years, and it was a great, great show. Very, very fun for the time. There's an elevator woman, Harrietta, in the show uh, Perfect Strangers, which ironically is the mother of Carl Winslow in Family Matters. Uh, so yes, Family Matters was actually invariably, inevitably a spinoff of the show Perfect Strangers. And initially, the show didn't do too well. It actually had low, low ratings until Urkel came into play. You know, Jaleel White. And uh, once that show uh, had Jaleel White in play, the show be became a star property and lasted a good eight years. It was about the misadventures of Carl Winslow and Jaleel White, Urkel. And this also happened in earlier sci-fi shows such as Lost in Space, where it started out as a serious sci-fi show. But then they saw that it was better as a humorous style show, a little bit corny, so to speak, with the misadventures of the robot, Dr. Smith, and Will Robinson. And I'm loving that this is running so much better than before. If I was going to talk about my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog game ever, it would easily be Sonic Generations on PlayStation 3. I love the combination of 2D and 3D levels, which harken back to earlier uh, Sonic the Hedgehog games, including Sonic and Knuckles. And how many of you know that uh, Michael Jackson was actually enlisted to help with the soundtrack of Sonic the Hedgehog 3? Imagine if that would have come to full fruition. A soundtrack with Michael Jackson music in it, Sonic the Hedgehog style. Very, very cool. And another show that I used to watch, and I have no shame in this, at the time was Step by Step. I also love that show. And one of my favorite characters on the show was Cody. Sasha Mitchell, he was a great martial artist in real life and a cool all-around dude. He actually took over the role of uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme in uh, Blood, uh, not Bloodsport, Kickboxer 2 through 4. And Kickboxer 4 was one of my favorite movies ever. I love that it actually was very similar in tone to the great Bruce Lee movie, uh, Enter the Dragon. 
and the other movie that was very, very much like this was Balls of Fury, which was very, very funny. But yes, Sasha Mitchell was a great martial arts artist, and if you actually watched enough of the Step by Step shows, you would actually have been able to see him showcase his martial arts fortitude in a specific episode where he was actually uh, going up against a guy who had poor manners. And he was in another movie that I really, really liked at the time, The Substitute 2, 1999, where he played a robot teacher who acted out uh, <laughs> punishment accordingly in a very, very interesting way. I love those late 80s, early 90s movies like Chopping Mall, Deadly Friend. They were all very, very entertaining. I still love them to this day. And hopefully I'll make it past the stage without having to camp up the keyboard. And that my only complaint with any of these Sonic the Hedgehog games, particularly Sonic Adventure 2, was the fetch quest. I was never a fan of fetch quest in any game, and uh, even in Kingdom Hearts, I did not like doing the fetch quest for finding seashells on the seashore. That had to be an inside joke. But running much better, guys and gals. Very, very cool. And uh, if you have a PlayStation 3, they actually had re-releases of many of these Dreamcast games much later on, including uh, the GameCube version of Sonic Adventure, complete with the battle mode as a downloadable game, along with uh, several other games. I mean, they have many, many uh, Sega set, uh, Dreamcast games on the uh, PlayStation 3, which is very, very cool. And I'll have to pull those up in one of my other videos. But yes, you can get Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Crazy Taxi, Even uh, the Sega Fishing game. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to do some more uh, games that people have been asking about as far as how well they run with this Dreamcast core. But very, very pleased here. Awesome. Yes. Yes. It would have been cool if we had Kool Aid Man. But we're going to do something interesting here. Uh, you can actually use the dummy folder again properly. Now you can load more than one game at a time. And I'm going to show you this right now. Let's quit back to RetroArc. I'm going to actually do it from the RetroArc from the yeah. main user interface. And before we move on to the dummy folder method, I'm going to have to make sure I do Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I do not want to forget about this in this video. Yes, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is by far the most popular game amongst you guys and gals to play on the Dreamcast Core on your mini. So as a result, this is my number one priority to have this game running as well or admirably as possible. We will obviously never have 60 frames per second like many games have on the real Dreamcast, but we'll be able to maintain a 30 solid frame per second on a vast majority of games that you can conceivably ever hope to run on the system. So let's get the show on the road. I should still have all the characters unlocked from my previous test demonstration. They saved to the memory card and once saved to the memory card, they're permanently unlocked until you want that save. And one thing I always liked about these games that Capcom made is if you have a character that you're not really familiar with, you can try to move sets of other characters such as Ryu, Chun-Li, Guile, Dalsam, Balrog, and have a chance of getting some of the movesets appropriately uh, accounted for. Okay, uh, since I'm a Wolverine fan, um, I guess I'll pick Sabretooth as number one nemesis. And I'll pick Venom as my secondary character. I did enjoy the latest Tom Hardy fun interpretation of Venom. It was an enjoyable movie. And Tony Todd did a fantastic turn as the voice of Venom. And uh, we'll round this out with uh, Mega Man as my final character. And ironically, this latest Jake Gyllenhaal sci-fi horror movie called Life, which has nothing to do with Venom, is actually a great unofficial prequel to uh, Venom, in my own opinion. So you can actually invariably watch Life with Jake Allen Hall and then watch Venom right afterwards and they are perfect companion pieces. You'll know exactly why once you watch them. Run so nicely. I mean, two player mode activate is going to be so much better on this in the future now. 
That's all we need. Some Killer Instinct style combos there. And yes, we need our Hape and Help and Up Killer Instinct 1 and 2 arcade. But they will probably never happen on the mini, unfortunately. This is running so beautifully right now. Very, very happy. <laughs> very funny. Mega Man versus Wolverine. Whoever thought that would have been a conceivable battle in real life. <laughs> very, very cool. I love the team up bar combos, they're so cool. Venom time! I love how fast paced this is now. It's running so much better than before, and I'm gonna go into uh, video settings here. It's running at a solid 33 frames per second. That is absolutely beautiful. I love it. We're gonna move on to some more games now. Uh, I'm gonna go into the Retro Arca from the main user interface to test some things out. Love that graphical glitch on the coin. Very, very funny. <laughs> That's just because I pushed the home button. It just happened to do that little glitch. Very funny. And uh, we're gonna go from Retro Arca from the main user interface and test out a few more games that you guys and gals have asked me about. Again, you can go into uh, Extras, Hashi, and add Clover SNES as a game. And then sync it or export it to have this on your main user interface, the home menu. And it'll show up just like this. And once Okay, now we're doing the dummy forward method of which I've done many, many countless times before in previous videos. You can do low core or low content, doesn't really matter which order. I'll do low core, the Dreamcast core. Low content, Star Directory, dummy, Dreamcast. I'm going to do a few games in a row that people have asked me to look into. Soul Calibur is one of these, and in my previous test example of this, all the characters had shadowy graphics, and they all look like they were straight out of Zelda 2 as Dark Link. I do not expect this to run any better before. I have a feeling it's still going to have some graphical glitches and still be underperforming and slow, but let's check it out anyway. And one nice thing about this update that I'll be posting, you're going to be able to load more than one game in a row. The only side effect you'll have now is if the memory uh, ends up freezing up, you'll get a C7 error and get kicked back to the home menu. And you can just come back in, and if that game does work and have support for it, test out that same game that you get a C7 error with, and if it works, it'll run. If you keep getting C7 over and over again, that means the game is simply not supported. And additionally, if you want to save a game to a memory card, make sure you run them from the home menu. Only run games from dummy folder method that you're not too concerned with saving. That's pretty much the gist of any game you run through the dummy folder method. There are a few uh, uh, examples of games that will still save from the dummy folder method, such as uh, PSP. But I'm a big Soul Calibur fan. I love the guest appearances that show up in games such as Tekken and Soul Calibur, such as Yoda and Darth Vader, and even Kratos from God of War and Ezio from uh, Assassin's Creed. And there's a Soul Calibur 6 that just came out. I'm kind of wondering if there are any guest appearances in that game whatsoever. I guess I'll have to find out soon enough. And we can see the characters this time. They're not shadowy, but uh, it doesn't appear as the game is running much faster than before, but it is actually running a few frames per second faster than before. Come on, Ivy. Let's bring this uh, wannabe uh, poser out. I typically like playing Kalik, uh, and of course, uh, Astaroth and Nightmare. Bye-bye! Very, very cool. I mean, not running full speed, but I'm still 
Happy that's running. We're going to move on to some other test examples here. I'll go to uh, low content since I already have the core loaded. Star Tractory, dummy. Um, another game that people have been asking about is uh, Daytona USA, so let's give that a quick shot. Again, if I load too many games in a row and I run out of memory, I'll simply get kicked out with a C7 error, which is absolutely harmless. And I'm kind of hoping I get a C7 error just so I can show you this in action. But so far, so good. And uh, my previous test example of this particular game, it would always crash on the roll and start. So I'm kind of hopeful that the game will make it past the roll and start this time around. And I do ironically have this game on my PlayStation 3, along with every other Dreamcast game that has been posted by Sega that is available for download, including Space Channel 5. And don't judge me, I still had fun playing that. I particularly like doing the Michael Jackson levels in the game. They were very funny at the time. But I'm hoping now uh, that this game doesn't crash on after the roll and start like it always did before. And if this game doesn't crash, I know exactly which game to test next. Because Dynamic Recompiler is a double-edged sword, whereas it helps games run better, but it also helps games crash more easily. And even when I first tested this game a couple months ago, I was happy that it got in-game, but then I was disappointed when I got to the roll and start, and it counted down to zero, and I crashed immediately to the home menu. But let's see what happens. It would always crash the moment it got past the one. Well, surprisingly, we didn't crash. One thing I always enjoyed about this game is the fact that it had some funny crashes. So I'm going to have to definitely end this in a good note and get a really good crash. Maybe crash into another car or a wall. We get enough uh, speed to do this. Right now. Boom! Always fun to do those crashes. Not full speed, but still tremendously fun to play, considering. Again, if you have a PlayStation 3, you should still be able to download the Dreamcast version and play it full speed ahead. So low content, Star Treasury, dummy. Um, what other games do we have to test? We'll try, uh, Jedi Power Battles, which always crashed, particularly on the PlayStation 1 core. It would always crash a few seconds in, roughly 20 to 30 seconds in on the PlayStation 1 core, and a few seconds in on this core, due to the dynamic, uh, dynamic, yeah, I might as well say dynamic, but demonic, dynamic recompiler uh, issues. And let's see how it fares this time around. I did put this on my home menu as well, but since I'm already in the RetroArch menu, I'll try it out right here and now. But we have three games in a row without a C7 crash, so we're good. But again, you have a chance of getting a C7 crash if you do the dummy photo method. And again, it is absolutely harmless. And of course, I'm not going to play easy mode, I'm going to play Jedi mode. Ah, eh, we'll play as Mace Windu. Gotta love Samuel Jackson, always fun in all his movies. And again, this game would always invariably crash a few seconds in. It would start out fine, but then it would slow down and just freeze. So I'm really hopeful it makes it past the crash point, because Sega uh, uh, Daytona USA did. Not running uh, very fast, but still playable. Please don't crash. I really hope it makes it this time. So far, so good. Yeah, I was a big fan of this game and the other Star Wars game on the original Dreamcast because they looked so much better than the original PlayStation 1 versions that they came from. Well, the game hasn't crashed yet, so I'm very, very hopeful on this one. And 
I do remember being able to do a deflect attack when they shoot at you. I'm gonna see if I can remember that. Okay. Okay, I get blocked with the L2 button, so I should be able to do that too. But yes, the game's running better. At least uh, enough for me to actually play the game now. Even though it's imperfect, I still am thoroughly enjoying this right now because I'm a big Star Wars fan, as well as a Star Trek fan. I'll never pick one over the other. Okay, let's see if I can do the deflect attacks here like I used to. You have to time it right to make them deflect back into the enemies. Very, very cool. Worked out it, it, quite well there. I'm still more of a fan of this game than LEGO Star Wars. I mean, I do like the original Star Wars games. But I do enjoy the LEGO interpretations of them as well. But we're good right now. Everything's running nicely. I really hope the game is fully playable from beginning to end. But we're going to do uh, some more test examples from Low Cap Dent Star Trek 3 Dummy. What else do we have to test out that didn't run well before? Let's see if it is lit there. Quite a few to choose from. Uh, we'll try Jet Grind Radio. Why not? And this is actually a game that I own more than once. I had it on my original Xbox in a combo pack along with Sega GT as well as on my original Dreamcast and I even have it as a downloadable purchased digital title on my PlayStation 3 along with many other Sega games that have been released on the system that Sega was nice enough to put on there such as Space Channel 5. Again, don't judge me. And of course Sega Base Fishing and they even put some Sega Saturn games on there like Nights Into Dreams. I mean... I need more companies to do this type of thing. We all need more companies to do this type of thing. We need iron games such as Ninja Baseball Batman to be on there. We need Ninja Baseball Batman on our PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and or, of course, Nintendo Switch. Our type is not enough. We need the whole gamut of all the classic iron shmup titles and action side scroll and brawlers. But right now we're checking out Jack Ryan Radio. Great game, and there are not a whole lot of games that I've ever played that have had this gimmick of graffiti. And, uh, I mean, I can't even think of them off the top of my head because they're so few and far between. But last time I tested this, it did not run too well. It actually had a miserable frame per second, and the music was nearly indistinguishable. Jake Radio! Jake Radio! I'm pumped. Let's do this. Preferably at a uh, better frame per second than before. Sounds like Stan Lee, or does it? From the get-go, the music is actually easier to make out. This is a positive sign for the better. And yes, when companies actually make these games available, we do our part and uh, support them accordingly by buying them. Just make them available, license them aside. Let's see how this game controls once we get to my main uh, antagonist, protagonist here. Now I'm a big fan of cel shaded graphics. My best personal favorite example of this would be obviously Ultimate Spider-Man, which was on PC, Xbox, and of course PS2. I'm definitely going to have to showcase this game in one of my next horror extravaganzas. Let's see how I can grind some rails here. Yep, working real nice. I'm not going to really play this game too much right now because I really want to get on to the last act of this video. But I'm definitely going to be coming back to this and I hope you guys and gals are going to be able to enjoy this because it is obviously running at a much better frame per second than before and the music is very, very easy to distinguish finally. But I'm going to do a dummy folder method and do the final game before I move on to the final act of this uh, Dreamcast Travaganza Part 1. Low content, Star Trek 3, dummy. Dreamcast. And I'm a big fan of a uh, uh, particular racing series that happened to be on the Xbox, as well as the Xbox 360, Project Gotham. Great, great uh, series. And, uh, I mean, Sony had uh, Gran Turismo. J Xbox in general had, of course, Forza, but I love Project Gotham the most out of all of them. So if I picked up an Xbox right now, I'd most certainly pick up uh, Project Gotham 1 and 2. Xbox 360, I would pick up uh, Project Gotham 3. And of course, I love the Need for Speed Most Wanted on Xbox 360 as well. But here we go, my Tropolis Street Racer, the final game before I do the last game of the final act. So far, so good. No C7 errors on the dummy footer method, so we're good to go here. 
Again, if you ever get a C7 error, simply exit back to the main user interface and then uh, come back and test that game again before giving up on it. But this game actually ran uh, reasonably well before. I'm having uh, hope that it runs even better than that. And our final game in the final act is going to be Fantasy Star again. Because in the last uh, Dreamcast video, I played uh, the first stage using the Ranger. This time I'm going to use the Hunter and uh, do the second stage. But let's see how this fares real quick before we get to that point. And uh, Microsoft actually bought out Bizarre Creations who made this game. And uh, unfortunately we haven't had a true Project Gotham game since then. But the first three are impeccable productions without a doubt. But let's see how this runs. And yes, kudos is a, a typical respect uh, quotient that is in all of the Project Gotham games. From Metropolis Street Racer to 1 through 3. We have a few um, fighting games such as Marvel vs. Capcom 2 running exceptionally well. We need to have some racers too. I remember not having to really put my name in here. I just uh, clicked on it and it uh, kind of finishes it for me. I just want to see how the game runs again because it is one of my favorite personal uh, Dreamcast games. Great pump and soundtrack as well. Need to get a car, of course. We'll go for the Fiat. Why not? I'll do a challenge race for it. I love that the music sounds like your typical KMFDM style industrial uh, metal music. Very cool. I just have to get 25 seconds or better for a lap in order to obtain this car. Okay, when I'm trying to steer the car, it's actually beeping the horn as well, so I'm going to go into Retro Art Settings, Controls. This is uh, something you have to adjust to for cores like PSP as well. You want to go to where the analog type says left analog, and set them to even standard or none, and then retest the game. So the horn should uh, feasibly stop uh, doing the noise, and I should be able to control the car just fine. There we go. Star button gets out of that. Yep, I can control it and it ain't doing a crazy horn. Very, very cool. The game's controlling nice and smooth here. Very, very happy. I just gotta get 25 seconds to, in order to get this car. <laughs> gotta get used to doing that power drifts again. It's been a little while since I last played this. I'll try one more lap. Why not? It's not that hard to get used to. I mean, you're doing it one single lap here. Should be able to do it within a half dozen tries. There we go. I got my car, so I'm good to go. The game runs awesome. Now we're going to move on to the final act, and we're going to be doing Fantasy Star Online. But yes, many of these games that I tested before are running considerably better, on an average of 15-30% to 30 better than before. There are a few things that can make them run better, and I'm going to look into them, but for right now, I'm very happy with this uh, as far as the next release. So here we go, Fantasy Star Online. Now we're on to the final act, and I'm playing some more Fantasy Star Online, which I told you is my favorite game on the original Dreamcast by far. And in the last video, I played as a Ranger who is not the best solo character to play with. I mean, much, much better as a supporting character when you're playing online with three other people. But this time around, I'm going to be playing as a Hunter, and I'm going to absolutely obliterate enemies, as you're going to see within the next few moments. And I'm also going to give you a little gist of uh, some of the codes that you can use throughout the course of the game. I would recommend using one uh, memory card for a legitimate character and maybe the second memory card for a character you might want to play around with uh, cheats with. And I'm going to give you a few other nuances and tips that you're going to need to take into account as far as uh, playing this game and uh, getting your best overall experience with it. But let's get the show on the road here and we're going to play as the Hunter and uh, 
We'll go through the flow for a moment here. We're gonna play as uh, Lady Gaga, the relatively low level six hunter. And let's see how she fares. And I did uh, use the code to unlock all difficulties. Very, very cool. So I can go right to the hardest difficulty from the get go and uh, get my butt kicked. I mean, it is not at all easy to go to the higher levels with a low level character. I mean, you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna do a few cheat codes after I do uh, a couple minutes with this character without cheat codes. And I did tell you in the last video, you can actually find special weapons uh, in your travels to the planet when you defeat enemies. And I did have uh, one of these found in my last uh, run. And I'm gonna show you exactly what to do with these. I'm going to the shop over here. I'm going to the guy on the left who's a tiger. And whenever you find a rare item and such, it'll pretty much look like this. It'll have a question mark on there. And you find these usually from the rare enemies. And uh, he'll basically uh, verify what type of weapon it is. So let's see what we have here. I have a dim sword. Cool. Not an ultra rare item. This is just a pretty standard weapon right now. Now I'm going to go to the uh, surface and let's uh, obliterate some enemies here. And I'll go to the same level I did in the last video just so you can see the difference with the combat at roughly the same level as a hunter. And I do have every level unlocked. Again, a code. But I'm going to reload this uh, game and I'm going to show you some cheat codes and pretty much uh, go over them briefly. But let's go obliterate a few enemies here. And the frame per second is running quite a bit better than in my last video as well. Very, very happy here. Okay, let's take a few of these enemies out. Look at that, it's so easy now. <laughs> Very, very cool weapon. Here, a dagger. And my defense is much higher, so I'm not getting my butt kicked as easily. And let's try out that sword while we're here. Let me go over here and I equip a sword. So I'm going to switch out my dagger, uh... For the sword that I just uh, found, the Dim Sword. And I'm not leveled up enough to use it yet, but uh, when I use the cheat codes, you're going to see something quite interesting. So I'm going to play just a little bit more here with this weapon. Then I have some spells here. Let's take this out with uh, some lightning. Very, very cool. Then I have some fire. Okay, very, very cool. You can see there's a tremendous difference playing as a hunter versus playing as a ranger, but I absolutely love playing as a ranger with the gun-based combat. Very, very awesome. And I'm going to use a telepipe to go back to the town right now. Actually, I'm just going to quit the game. And again, do not quit via RetroArch. Make sure you quit the game via the game itself. Otherwise, it's not going to save to the memory card. So I'm quitting right now. Once I get out of, away from these enemies. Quit game. And this will save my current game to the memory card. Again, if you quit via RetroArch, you're going to lose everything. So I'd recommend saving this fairly frequently. Just in case you have a problem where the game might crash on you. Which could potentially happen. Okay, uh, now I'm actually going to completely exit the game, and I'm going to load up some cheats now. So I'm going to load the game, and again, I told you uh, the moment you see the Dreamcast logo is the best time to do the cheats. And I played Fancy Star Online V1 right now. And the moment I see the Dreamcast logo, I'm going into RetroArch Cheats. And I do have the Dreamcast, uh, uh, Dreamcast Cheats installed right now. Okay. Quick menu, cheats, load, chief file, replace, Sega Dreamcast. Then I'm going to go to the Fantasy Star Line ones. 
And uh, one thing that's cool is uh, you can actually transfer your character from Fancy Star Online V1 to V2. And if there's anything that you added that's like considered a cheat, it'll just uh, pretty much reset that. So there's no harm, no foul in going up to V2. So I'd actually recommend starting out with Fancy Star Online V1 from the get-go so you can play around with some cheats if you'd like to because they actually fare better with V1 than they do with V2. But I'm going to go over a few of these right now. I need to enable the cheats from the get-go right here. And you can have Infinity HP, which I'm not too concerned with because that'll make the game uh, quite a bit boring. Here's Infinity Magic, which can be fun. I'm going to turn this on for right now. Here we have... Uh, Money doesn't go down or drop money or buy something to gain more. This is kind of a cool cheat. I'll show you this. You can get all items in shop for free. Which, uh, since I have this uh, money code on, I'm not too concerned with the all items in shop for free. Infinity item usage. That one actually has a catch to it. If you use infinity items, it's great for uh, doing your health potions and your magic potions. But you're not going to be able to get rid of items. You're going to end up uh, getting up to your max inventory and have no way to get rid of the items because every time you get rid of them you still have them in your possession so it's like a genie that you have a wish for and you wish for something infinitely good and then it ends up being uh, having this catch like that I'm not even going to enable that but like I said your inventory is going to fill up and you won't be able to add anything else to your inventory until you turn the code off here you can do uh, extra items which is also cool level 100 after one battle I mean that, that also makes the game a little bit boring but if you want to play around with it, on the second memory card, uh, here we go, save time modifier, which I use to give myself like 5,000 hours. The higher the time that you play the game, the more rare items you'll find. Have all max level techniques, not saveable, so you can use it for that current play session. I did all difficulty levels open, and then I did, uh, I'll go down real quick. I did have all difficulties cleared. These both saved to my memory card. So even though they're disabled right now, they still saved to my memory card. Just like with the Marvel vs. Capcom 2, where I actually had uh, all the characters unlocked. Here, whenever you die, just like in Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and of course, uh, Bloodborne, you could potentially drop your weapon here. Turn this on, your weapon will stay in your, uh, in your arms. I mean, you'll never drop it. You can walk through walls, which is a little bit boring. Here we have some grinding where some of the weapons will be like plus one, plus two. You can actually make it where you go up to like plus 99. And if there's any cheat that I would recommend playing the game with, it'd obviously be God of Equip. This is the coolest code you could ever use right here. And uh, online, the, the way they meant the game to be is there's uh, ultra rare to get rares. And you might see somebody have a rare. And uh, the chances of getting some of the rares are 700,000 of one. And, uh, of course, if you're playing as a specific character like the Hunter, you're not going to be able to use the guns, the better guns. So, with this right here, this uh, God of Equip items technique, you can use any weapon or any item with any character, which is incredibly awesome. I mean, totally kick-ass. And, uh, here we go. Target NPCs with uh, technique. This is actually the one that actually ruined people's games online. Because not only can you target NPCs, you can actually target online people that you're playing with. So whenever they teleport, once you see them starting to teleport, you can actually hit them with a spell and freeze their game and wipe out their entire inventory. This was so malicious and evil as a code. I never personally used it except in uh, closed sessions with a friend to test out the effects of this. But definitely nothing I would definitely use maliciously against somebody else. But where we stand right now, we have all the codes that we're going to be using. So I'm going to resume the game. Again, uh, God of Equip is the main one I'd recommend using, and if you want to have all difficulty levels and all levels, unlock that as well, but again, have two memory cards, and use one legitimately, and use a second one for somebody to play around with for fun like this. But I'm all good to go, and I'm going to resume the game now. Okay. Now load my same character because again it's a, a secondary character that I'm just playing around with right now. Again, I'm not high enough level to even go too hard or very hard. You need to be at least like level 20 to have any impact on uh, hard mode and at least level 40 to have any impact on very hard mode. And then of course uh, you're supposed to be at least level 80 to play Ultimate Mode on uh, Fancy Star Line V2. 
Well, let's play as Lady Gaga again, and this time we have some codes. If you look at my time there, it says I played for 4,662 hours, roughly. So, <laughs> I have a better chance to find the rares overall, which is kind of cool. Offline mode. I'm going to go to the normal. This time I'm going to go to the second stage, but I have this uh, God of Equip enabled, and I'm going to show you exactly how to use it. And since I have Infinity Magic, I'm actually going to set things up with that, too. So I'm going to go to uh, my inventory real fast. Again, uh, when you have uh, this equipped, don't go to item equip because it will not work via equip. You have to actually go to items. Just watch what happens here. I'm going to try to re-equip another weapon, like that sword that I'm not high enough level to use yet. Dumb the dum dum now let me do it. But, if I go to items, which is uh, what the code does, God of Equip works via items only. I'm going to go to uh, that sword. Equip, and let me equip it, even though I'm not high enough level to do it. And I can also equip anything else in my inventory, including a rifle that only a ranger can use. See the X to the left of it? I cannot use it. Now I'm going to actually customize my spells before I go down to the town. Should I say the land service? I uh, have some monomates that uh, heal my health, but I'm actually going to swap that out. Let's uh, do that one more time. I push the back button. I'm going to change that over to a spell since I have infinity magic. And these are all the spells you can get in the game. Uh, Rasta is the heal spell, so I'm going to put that there now. And then, uh, since I have infinity magic, I'm going to throw another spell on here, my ice spell. Okay. And then we're going to go to the second stage now. The caves. Very, very cool. Again, uh, I would highly recommend playing the game legitimately. And at least one memory card, and for the other memory card, just have a little bit of fun uh, playing around with some cheat codes. But look at this awesome sword. And yes, uh, a magic user with a sword is incredibly funny. But I got some awesome magic here. And again, I'm not very high level yet, so... These enemies are going to be a little more difficult than uh, I'm accustomed to. But look at that, I can hit multiple enemies at once with this broad sword. And of course I can use uh, my magic to heal myself. And then I can use some magic here, I'll use some fire on these guys. Some lightning. Look at that awesomeness. And those uh, plants you gotta watch out for. Them triffids, be very, very careful with them because they can actually poison you like they just did. I have uh, paralysis right now, which means I am unable to do anything whatsoever other than use items. So I'm gonna get out of here for a moment. I'm gonna go into my items. I did uh, bring some of these just to be on the safe side. Now, I do have spells for this as well, but uh, when you have that effect right there, it is actually paralysis. So I'm going to uh, uh, use this to take that off me. I'm good to go. I'm going to switch my weapons here. Okay, I have uh, both uh, effects. I'm also poisoned, so items. Antidote to get rid of poison and uh, anti-paralysis to get rid of paralysis. Now I'm going to switch uh, to... Uh, a ranger weapon, just for a, a moment here, for a, a kick. I'll try using a rifle. And push start after you equip a weapon. If you actually push the back button, you may unequip the weapon. Make sure you push start to get back. Let's see if I have enough uh, ATA and attack power to actually use this weapon here. Look at that awesomeness. I can use the ranger weapon. That is so incredibly cool. Now I have infinity magic, which is awesome. And if you use a magic user with these uh, magic spells, you're going to be obliterating everybody because it does so much incredible damage. Now I have some ice here. And I got poisoned again, which will happen quite frequently down here. Again, not the best weapon to use for a hunter. I mean, they're it's a ranger weapon normally, but it's still incredibly fun to use these guns. 
And definitely get used to doing this triple hit combo that I told you about before. I gotta pay attention to my health there. I don't wanna uh, lose all my health. So I'm gonna switch back to the sword now. But let me get rid of this uh, poison real fast. But thank you all for watching. I, um, I'm probably going to do at least two more games here. But let's get rid of this poison effect real quick. And I'm going to switch back to that sword. Which is a very, very cool weapon. Dim sword. Make sure I'm all healed up here. And again, with uh, the amount of hours I put in, once I get to hard and very hard, I have a far better chance of uh, finding better rares. And with this God of Equip, uh, you can equip anything, which is so fun to do. I mean, uh, I wonder if I have any uh, magi uh, magic user weapons on me right now. I gotta check. Oh, I'm sure I'll find one. I don't have one right now, but... Okay. I love that you can actually hit multiple enemies with uh, one sword stroke. This is so cool. That is really awesome. And that is uh, one of the only characters that can really do that to hunters. Unless you have one of the uh, magic users using a sword, which is very, very funny. Again, uh, I'm going to show you what happens if you don't quit properly, too. Just say, for instance, I'm playing right now and I don't re really want to do this seriously. If I just quit via Retroarch, it's not going to save to the memory card. It'll lose the entire save. So since I am using cheat codes right now, I can actually just quit via Retroarch and none of these will, nothing that I've done through this play session will actually be saved whatsoever. There, I found a magic user weapon right there. Let's equip that and see what happens. Get out of here real quick. Equip this silly weapon that uh, only a magic user would typically use. Item, item. The rod, which ha has an X next to it because it's only for magic users. Says to the bottom right, cannot equip. Guess what? I can equip it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Let's see if I can do any damage whatsoever with this weapon. Yeah, I can actually do some damage. <laughs> You get an idea of what the magic user typical uh, weapon would be. Definitely not as easy to use for me because I'm too low level to really do much with this yet. You think it's hard for me to use this as a hunter? A magic user at the same level, level 6, using this would do very, very little damage. They would definitely need to be leveled up a bit more for this to have any true damage impact. I might be doing like two to three hits damage. Okay, let's see how close I'm to leveling up here. 40 more points to the next level. Now we're going to do something interesting. I'm actually going to quit one more time and just show you something. I'm going to quit my game. I'm just going to let it save for right now. And again, if you do not want it to save, just quit via Retroarch. We're going to go to the hardest difficulty in the game right now. Uh, 
<laughs> Offline, very hard. Again, my weapons aren't gonna do anything whatsoever. The only thing that's actually gonna touch these enemies for right now would be my uh, magic powers. That's it. Nothing but the uh, magic. So item, item. Uh, I'll try using the rifle. See if I can do any damage whatsoever. Again, this is not gonna be easy whatsoever. I'm gonna go to the absolute hardest level in the game, Ruins 1. That should be level 40 at an absolute minimum to uh, do this. And that level 40 is actually recommended for um, the forest level. So by the time you're to this level, you should be at least level 60 or so. So I'm really way, way out of my element right now. Look at that. I can't do anything to these guys, but check this out. Look how fast they move. They move far faster. That's the only thing I can do is uh, do magic spells on them. That's it. Bam. Just like that, I'm done. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is uh, I can actually just quit the game with the home button and nothing that I just did will save whatsoever. Uh, for the last part of the video, I'm going to do two more test games and then... Uh, I'll post this video and uh, get the update ready to go. Uh, we're going to do uh, Zombie Revenge one more time since it is Halloween after all. And uh, this is the first game that I ever want to work on this court. I'm so happy that it runs. It's so incredibly awesome. And uh, this should run better than it did in my last uh, test video for this. Really hopeful on this one. But hopefully you guys and gals are going to be playing some Fantasy Star Online. And I'm going to try to include some uh, documentation and tips in... Uh, the extras folder in the release uh, update and such, as far as uh, Harmony of Despair as well as uh, Fancy Star Online. But definitely a lot of variety to Fancy Star Online, and uh, if we get uh, online mode activate, it'll be even better. I have the GameCube version, which is incredibly cool because it actually has offline co op. That's what they should have done on the Dreamcast one. Offline co op would have been so much cooler and definitely would have benefited uh, us running this on the minis. But let's see how this game runs. We're going to make this uh, probably the final game in this video. So hope you enjoyed the video and let's see how this runs. And I love this game because it's like Resident Evil without the backtracking and having to find the ribbons and such. Oh yeah, running so nice right now. Very, very happy here. Machine gun! By the way, this is actually an arcade game. I'm not sure if any of you have ever played this in the arcade. Okay, let's see how the machine gun fares. Definitely running a lot better than in my last video. So yes, I'm uh, basically guesstimating a 15 to 30 percent uh, performance boost on these uh, games that I've been running throughout this test video here. How about a shotgun? Shotgun. It was very awesome. We all need a shotgun in every zombie game. There's a few graphical glitches, but nothing to really irritate me. Still incredibly fun to play. Headshot, you know? How did I get myself into this mess? Who cares? <laughs> 